Jimmy. Jim, Jim, Jimmy. Jim, James, son! Alrighty, well, we are back. Isn't that right, Smokey? Back with part two of the Malibu rebuild. Now, I'm finally figuring out what's making this radio freak out. I went ahead and got my amp meter out, and I noticed there were two brown wires and there were two gray wires. Now, I had already seen this, and I went ahead and attached the two gray wires and attached the two brown wires, wired them up to the corresponding wirings in the harness, and, you know, I thought, Bob's your uncle, all is good. Well, after going on that Chevy Malibu form and going after post after post after post, and finally finding the correct wiring diagram for this car, which is 2002 and a half, yes, that's right, and a half, they switched it mid-model year, turns out this brown wire actually goes to the parking lamps, and this gray wire actually goes to the parking lamps. And these two should be ignored because those are technically the illumination wires. Isn't that right, Smokey? Now, these illumination wires, for some reason or another, by GM, are colored exactly the same. So as soon as I unplugged those wires, sound started coming out of the rear speakers. Go figure. I think we've got this thing sussed, huh? Yeah, we figured it out. Ready? Oh, I like that song. Why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? <laughs> I don't think that's the right bar to sing that song in, but uh, that's okay. At least we figured out the stereo, man. That was biting me in the ass for the last two days. So now I can move on to getting that stereo install kit put in, and uh, maybe we can go to the junkyard now and get a better radio bezel and a glove box door and a few other small little knickknacks, knacks wax. Give the frog alone! That little thing there, you know. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys in a little bit. Luckily, I was able to find at least one of these at the junkyard here. Looks like it was very recently inspected. And there's what we need. We need one of these little plastic bezels in one piece. Um, I might possibly take the buttons, but I don't think so. I think I just need the bezel. And I also need this glove box door, but somebody's already beaten us to the punch. Man, it smells like piss in here. What the fuck? God. Ugh. Anyway, uh, that's all I really needed was the glove box and this thing, so I'm going to go ahead and take this. Ooh, somebody's glued this on. Man, I have the worst luck sometimes. Finally managed to find one with a glove box that wasn't completely butchered yet. And it's even the right color, gray. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. All i got to do is unbolt a few bolts down here. And I think maybe a few up top. There's a lot more to this than I assumed there would be. I assumed it would just be like a front panel, but instead you actually have to buy the whole glove box, which is a little annoying, just because this little this little flange here likes to rip. Whatever. Check this one out. I uh, wonder what happened here. Dang. Even the windshield's got it. Yeah, there's like bullet holes. on every every side of it hmm. Wow well I sure hope nobody was in here something tells me there's not gonna be very many good parts on this oh ah, well okie dokie so the next little thing we have to get to is this window regulator it's completely busted I just got a new one in the mail today you can see that the window just sort of goes down So, gotta fix that. Also have to fix this door switch that is just inexplicably missing. See, there we got the new switch. So we will go out my tools and start working on this. That actually came off surprisingly easy and in one piece. That almost never happens on a Chevy. Now all I gotta do is peel back this disgusting crap and go ahead and get to this regulator. You can clearly see that the regulator has taken a big fat shit. Unfortunately, the window is kind of stuck up, so I'm going to have to pull it down as best I can. I'm going to remove the bolts first, and then this is the last bolt. And hopefully this assembly will wiggle free so I can pull the window down and take the two mounts off. All right, now the story is getting weird. I went to pull this window regulator out, removed all the bolts, and nothing. It won't come out. And then my eyes went this way. What the hell is that? Why is there a USB cable sticking out of the door and where does it go? So when you follow it, it just goes up inside the door and I think this is jamming the window shut. So I'm gonna put this phone down and try to pull that out. 
All right, the old shitty regulator is out. Somehow, I managed to cut my hand. I have no idea how. There's the new window regulator over there. This one looks slightly better. We're gonna throw this in, and let's see if this window works. Window is in, now let's see if it works. Nice. Well, that's one window fixed. Now I gotta go work on that one. Still can't believe they were using a USB cable to hold the window up. <laughs> that's a new one on me. Here's the headlight before, and that's how it looks after. The interior of this car really surprised me. It was a real nice turnaround. This thing wasn't all busted like usual, and once I removed that nasty-ass fallout seat cover, underneath was a pristine seat. No rips, no cigarette holes, no tears, no giant chunks of foam missing. It's just a nice seat. Somebody actually used a seat cover for the right purpose once, to cover a nice seat. This has all been cleaned up, steering wheel area. I reattached that, but you can see I still have to glue it down because it's kind of pushing up a little bit, but I cleaned everything up, made sure everything works. All the windows are now working, both front and rear. Um, we've moved on basically to the carpet. I'm trying to clean the carpet as best as I possibly can. There's not going to be too much I can do. This is some of that. Listen, that's like dried on gunk, um, schmutz, shit. I don't know. It's something. Ooh, it's something. So door panels are nice. Even the rear, pretty nice. You can see I replaced that switch on this side. Got that window working. Got this window working off camera. I'm not going to do the same process twice. I'm in the process of removing these nasty stickers on the back. That's kind of a bitch, but uh, they're coming off. So overall, this car is coming out a lot better than I expected to. There's our friend, Bob Esponja. When I sold my truck, because I finally sold it a few days ago, the man who bought it did not speak one word of English. The only thing he could do was point to the bumper of my truck and scream, Bob Esponja, Bob Esponja. <laughs> because, and, y Patricio, because I had a Patrick sticker too for a while. Oh, I also want to point out that I'm sure I already did, but the headlights have been cleaned, so that's nice. Too bad there's that little scuff there, and, well, of course, the body damage. <coughs> Dang. Anyway, and, of course, the body damage. Um, I'm honestly just not even going to address it. I'm just going to sell it like it is. There's no point for me, honestly. On a car this cheap, you're not going to make any money fiddling and shit like that. Somebody, I guarantee you, will buy this and drive it to what is exactly like it is. So, the next thing is to take us on a test drive. Or I'd rather take you on a test drive. I guess it's us, because I'm going with you. But are you really here? I don't know. Let's go on a test drive. Just to show you that there are no check engine lights, check it out. They all illuminate. Especially the one in the corner there. And they all go out. That's the seatbelt light, so I just gotta put my seatbelt on and they'll have no lights. Let's go for a drive. So it really seems to drive just fine. It doesn't clunk, it doesn't shake, it doesn't knock, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't smoke. We roll the window up. You know, it drives fine, no lights. Uh, I'm gonna go get some gas right now because we are basically running on fumes. I'm gonna illuminate the light of gasulations, and we don't need that. Once you run one of these Malibus dry, it completely ruins the fuel pump, so. And you have to drop the gas tank, so we're not, we're not doing that again. No, no, no. No, no, no. Hopefully we can go ahead up here and uh, get to that Valero, or whatever the hell it's called. So I'll catch you guys in a second at the gas station. Let's see how much $16 gave us. Oh, that's not bad. Well, hey, look at that. That's pretty typical. Anywho, let's head home. Oh, we made it home. And I gotta say, the car drove pretty damn good. Put some gas in it. The only thing that I really need to check are the front brakes. Um, they're making quite a racket. Along with this thing, I have to replace this, because listen to the noise it makes. That's lovely, isn't it? I think it's not this, but it's actually the... Uh, power door lock actuator inside the door so this panel is gonna have to come off too wonderful yeah oh that tire's a little low but uh, something tells me the brakes on this thing are no bueno can't really see in there but i'll take it off later for real though like why is this in the door like this it literally serves no purpose unless it's like a counterbalance or something to hold something else up which i'm pretty sure it's it was holding this window up i have free screwdriver though i mean <laughs> This is better than the other one. The other one had a USB cable from a PlayStation holding it up. <laughs> I'm not shitting you from a PlayStation. Like, I, I'm going to put it in my video when I do the video on this thing. Uh, I'm not even shitting you. Damn. This is definitely interesting. That's fan-fucking-tastic. Definitely busted. The whole motor's busted, but... Alrighty, well, I mean, now i got to take this out. Where does it even go? 
One thing I kept forgetting to replace is this radio antenna. So you just pull this thing down, two bolts there, and there's like a rubber gasket that goes up in here. This thing basically that has to pull out. I have the replacement right here with the working antenna. So I'm gonna try my best to get up in there and pull this out without ripping the boot. So there is the new antenna. It definitely needed one. As soon as I put that stereo in, I ended up finding out that it didn't catch any stations. So at least I didn't put a freaking coat hanger. <laughs> I know people that do that. The second thing is I banged this dent out. Remember there was a huge cave-in in here. And I went from the inside and just sort of smacked it as flush as I could. And actually it came out really nice. I actually think I'm impressed. Now let's move to the interior. The back was cleaned up. These windows were repaired. I found these cool matching floor mats that match the same color as the car, which is dope. I just need to vacuum them because they came from the junkyard. You can see that I've cleaned the whole front interior. Now, well, the next thing we're going to do is put an ozone machine in here overnight because, man, it stinks in here. It smells, kind of smells like a raccoon maybe died. I don't know. I doubt that, but you know what I mean. It, it smells bad. So I'm going to put this on hold, plug it in in a second, leave it all night. But before we do that, I'll show you the front fender. I tried to have some of the dent pulled out here as well. Remember how it caved in a lot worse? Now it's mostly flush, but it's still not great. Better than before. This I'm just not going to touch. It doesn't affect the door opening and closing, so I'm not going to let it bother me. I also managed to get the correct clips for this, so I didn't have to glue it down. And now it is nice and evenly seated. Along with the other one as well. So, this thing cleaned up a lot better than I expected. It exceeded all my expectations. Time to turn this thing on and walk away as fast as I can. Well, there it is, looking a lot better. That dent does a lot for the rear end of the car. It doesn't make it look so smashed, along with that one being popped out a little bit. You can see the extension wire running to the ozonifier, the ozonification machine, which is now ozonifying all the oxygen and nasty other particles in the interior and hopefully cleaning up that smell and desmellifying it, because man, it smells. Tomorrow, um, I have some brake work to do on this vehicle, along with checking the transmission fluid, and that'll probably be it. So I will catch you guys tomorrow. So I'm finally getting to the brakes on this nasty, nasty, windy day. So I bought those pads like I was telling you earlier in the video. They came in, and I looked down here and realized something. The pads are just fine. You see that right there? They're actually kind of new looking. So are the rotors. That means it wasn't the pads or the rotors causing the noise, and I should have checked first before buying pads. It's actually the caliper slide pins and bracketry. That means somebody didn't grease these pins clearly. And they're just kind of fumbling around here making noises and kind of gripping a little too hard. They're getting stuck, basically. Next thing we're going to do after that is go up here to the transmission and remove the fill plug, which is way down in there for those of you who can see that red hard knob. You grab your red hard knob and you start cranking as hard as you can until the good stuff comes out, you know what I mean? Like that. Oh, yeah. And then, boop. Take the tip. Put the tip down there. Grab your appropriate transmission fluid and a funnel and fill the transmission. Now, I wish that was the only step and then you would pull a dipstick out and check the fluid, but no, 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 GM says, you go down here like a common dog. You sleep outside. There you go. That is the drain plug for this transmission. I believe it's a 10 millimeter or so. You loosen that, start filling it from the top, and as soon as it starts dribbling out on a flat surface, that's how you know the transmission is full. You know, instead of every other company in the world that just puts a drain uh, bolt and a freaking dipstick. But whatever. So let's get on it. Well, there you go, it's done. Both front brake pads were replaced, all four of them. Uh, they were good, but I decided to go with the ones that I already had just because I'm already in there. I greased the calipers and the noise went away. I also checked the transmission fluid and it turns out instead of being underfilled like I expected, it was actually overfilled. Somebody had just unloosened the nut in the past and dumped as much fluid as they could in there instead of checking it the proper way under the transmission with the little nut. So as soon as I loosen that little nut, it's sprayed out and I'll show you what it's sprayed out. About one and a half to two quarts of extra fluid that it actually didn't need. The leaves are kind of just been in there since it's been here since this morning. The leaves did not come out, don't worry. But this much fluid, along with at least another quart that spilled, should not be in there. It was already overfilled as it is, and you don't want to overfill these old beasts. They get kind of temperamental. You can see this side has also been polished. Um, 
The dents I decided to leave because it's a budget car. I'm not going to go through the trouble of removing every single dent on a car that probably no more than $1,500 max. Cleaned up all the glass, so it looks real nice. The front tires and the hubcaps have been cleaned. Headlights have been cleaned. Like I showed in the previous part of this video, the dent was mostly removed from here. This dent is still here, unfortunately, but I'm sure some of you could do better. Um, but you guys aren't here, so I got to make do with what I can and the capabilities that I have at the moment. You can see that it shined up really nice. That paint is just excellent for the year of this car. A couple of stickers I still have to take off. The antenna is now where it's supposed to be. The interior, man, the interior in this thing cleaned up real nice. Look at that. Other than that wire I still got to tuck out of the way. Look at that. Even the rear interior. Look at that. Truly a turnaround. A diamond in the rough. I love these cars. They might not be everyone's favorite, but they're my favorite. Just because they get the job done and they're so cheap. So that is going to be it for this car. Thank you guys for watching, and definitely I will see you again in the next one.